Is your resin curing too soft? Will it not take paint? Is it sticky? Does it foam? Is it oily? Did it warp after it was cast? In this video, I explain the top five resin issues that make your cast parts warp or impossible to paint. If you just found my channel, be sure to check out my long form videos. I cover a wide variety of topics on molding, casting, and special effects applications. Most polyurethane resin systems are relatively simple to use. That said, it's important to know the common mistakes and the common pitfalls so you can make sure to avoid these and get good, consistent results every time you cast your resin parts. Now, first off, biggest problem is mixing off ratio. Be sure to check the ratio on your casting resin. If you mix your polyurethane resin off ratio, you will get soft parts, oily parts, or parts that cure the wrong color. First, make sure you know the ratio. Is it by weight or volume? Be as accurate as possible and remember that one to one is not sum to sum. Very small batch sizes, even by weight, can be difficult to get consistent results. Make sure you are mixing enough resin for your scale or your measuring cups to register properly. Use an accurate gram scale or accurately marked mixing cups. Avoid spring scales and poorly marked mixing cups. Some graduated mixing cups are approximate in their measurements and are intended for mixing rather than measuring. Now, second, poor mixing or under mixing. Mixing your resin with a spoon or no stir stick or in ribbed plastic cups can lead to uncured or oily spots on the cured parts. These parts may warp or exude oil and they will be impossible to paint. Make sure you're using clean, straight-sided mixing cups with a flat bottom. Mix with a clean, straight stir stick or spatula. Stir both directions, shearing the material. Scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing cup so that no part of the mixing cup is left unmixed. Stir thoroughly and be conscious of the working time. Remember, these are fast-setting resins and they can literally set up while you're pouring. Number three, moisture contamination, high humidity, Water in your mold or damp stir sticks can introduce moisture. Water, even in small amounts, will cause polyurethane resin to bubble and foam. Be sure to seal your parts A and B after each use and work in a climate controlled area with low humidity. If you live in a very humid climate, mix with a stainless steel spatula. Remember that slower resin formulas will be more susceptible to moisture contamination as the longer open time allows for more time to react with ambient humidity. An interesting aside, I actually had to pour water into this TC-808 to contaminate it. So if you're looking for a tough, moisture-resistant resin formula for high-strength parts, TC-808 is a great choice. Number four, incompatible additives and pigments. Your pigments, dyes, and fillers must be compatible with your resin. If not, they may leach out of the cured part, change color over time, or cause foaming or change the softness of the cured part. Check with the resin manufacturer to see what additives work with that formula. And when in doubt, run a small test. For example, using acrylic paint as a pigment could cause the resin to be contaminated and to foam when it reacts with the moisture in the acrylic paint. Number five, wrong release agent. This is a big one that can sneak up on you. If you will be painting your finished cast parts, make sure to use a mold release that is paintable. Do not use any mold release that contains silicone oil. Remember that some paintable mold releases will need to be washed off the cast part. If you know you are going to be painting the finished part, you should also avoid casting into polyurethane molds as they require a much more potent release. Here I am avoiding E236 and using E302 as it is a paintable release formula. E236 has its place but not for resin parts that require painting. Now, accuracy, attention to detail, and a good understanding of the resin's data sheet will ensure good, consistent results. And remember that anytime you're trying something outside of the scope of the manufacturer's data sheet or something not recommended by the manufacturer, run a small test to make sure it works and gets the results you want before you proceed with a critical project. 
Now, as always, be sure to like and comment for the algorithm. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm going to link all of the materials used in this video in the video description. So be sure to check those out, especially the uber tough and moisture resistant TC808. Thanks for watching and be sure to check the end screen for additional how-to videos.